Welcome to Friends of God Worship Center. We're bringing you the Word of God on this weekend. It's traditionally known as Mother's Day weekend. All mothers, we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want you to know we love you and we care for you and pray God's blessings be upon you. However, we want to bring you a special gift today. This gift is, is wrapped is wrapped in a package but it's called the Word of God. So we're going to take you to the Word of God. And all mothers, and some fathers have been mothers, as well as fathers, we bring you greetings as well in Jesus' name. So you have done a wonderful job, and today we acknowledge you. Do something good, and I guarantee you, God will bless you. Well, let's have a prayer before we move forward. Dear Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, that in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence, asking for your anointing. For I say though, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think solely according to God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Then I want to go to Matthew chapter 13, verse number 31 and 32. Just give me a second here. Be patient with me. Just like you got to be patient with those that are going to be blessing you today. Amen. That's right. It's on the way. The Word of God is on the way. Matthew 13. All right. 31. And another parable he put forth, said unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, when a man took and sowed in his field, which is indeed the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and lodge in the branches thereof. And I want to refer to you another scripture found in Ephesians, and I'll just uh, just relate that to you. But in building our faith, the Lord Jesus, by the way, the Holy Spirit gives us a blueprint, and we have to have a foundation. A foundation has to be laid in us, and this foundation we see is. The foundation is very small. It's the beginning of where God wants to put our faith. The faith is, is measured out, and it is small. You know, it's amazing that when Jesus began to teach about the kingdom, he always used small things to teach kingdom principles. He revealed the kingdom in small things, even down to the little foxes, because they're the ones that spoil the vines. He always uses little things, little ships. He was concerned for those who are on the little ships. And now we see something else that's little. The mustard seed is the smallest of the seeds. But yet, in the mustard seed, there is a DNA. That's right. Everything has a DNA, which is the blueprint, really. God has put a DNA in us. But in the seed of faith, there is also a DNA. That's right. He built us. And there's two strands that run through the DNA. And each strand, you know, is used you know, to build our, our character. So God shows us his plan for building our lives of faith. We can have strong faith, but it must have a foundation first. You know, I think about George Washington Carver, and he wanted to know who God was, or who God is. And he was thinking about the universe, and God said, you're thinking too large. He said, I want you to think about something small. Just consider a peanut. Now, most of us would think that you know, God is so big until 
how can they get into small things? But that's what he wants to do. He wants to get into small things so he can reveal himself in the smallest of things. The composition of life is made up of small things. Our cells, we can't see it. It's invisible. But you can see it under a microscope. You can't see faith. It's small. You can't see it. We all have a measure of faith. And most of us want to have big faith so we can do big things. But it doesn't take big faith to do big things. It just takes a little bit of faith. But do you not know that once faith gets into something, once it gets in there, you have to put faith into it so that the faith that you put into it can do the job that it was sent to do. You, you can't put doubt in things and thinking that you're going to get some results. Faith is not doubt. Faith is full persuasion of God's ability to perform His Word. We must be fully persuaded, and we're worried about what size of faith we have so that God can prove Himself by the size or the amount. He is not into the amount of things. In regardless of the amount of faith we have, he said a measure is all you need. We don't even sometimes use the measure. Some of us today, we're not necessarily using the measure of faith. And we just want more faith. We don't want to use what we have. It just takes a little bit. And if you can use a little bit, then God is able to take what little you have. You know, I remember back in the day a song that said, little is much when God is in it. Well, when God gets in the little bit of faith that we have, I tell you what, he'll work things out. You always, and see, he gave every man the measure. He gave every man what we call little faith. And we run around because we want to be like the centurion. Oh, I want great faith. Well, are you, what are you doing with the little that you have? Are you producing results? Are you putting that in the things of God? Are you nurturing the little faith? Are you building it up? Are you knowing that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God? That's right. Every time you hear the Word of God, it builds the muscle of your faith. That's right. The foundation gets stronger and the walls of faith go up. You know, it's time for the walls of faith to go up in your life. You've got to have a strong building. You have to have a strong building. When the winds blow, when adversity comes, you, your foundation is strong, your walls are strong, your roof is strong, and I'm speaking about your building, the spiritual house you're in, because we have a spiritual house that's not made with hands, eternal, and it will last forever. That's the building that God put His Spirit in, and our spirit is this faith. So the faith of God is on the inside of us, and we have to use it so that God can build in us his persuasive ability. So God wants to persuade us that he will perform his word and he will do just what he says. Yes, we can have faith for healing. Some of us who are going through problems, we're thinking that it has to be this way just because of how we feel or what we think or thinking that it can't get any better. Stop, that's doubt. Faith says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You have to continue to say the word of faith if you want to get results. Faith has to be built up if you want results. You've got to put your faith in the word of God and faith in the thing that is being tested. All right, your body is being tested, well, put your faith there in the place of weakness and say, weakness, you've got to go because faith just moved in and I will receive my healing because faith is coming to rescue me from weakness, from tiredness, from infirmity, from lackness, from just being outright tired of going through. Faith is coming to redeem you and rescue your body. You don't have to continue to carry the weight that you've been carrying. You're thinking that you can't get any better. Yes, it can. 
Stop putting that word out there, can't get any. Well, it, it will get better. Don't say it can't get any. Those words are, are spirit and life. That's why your faith has to speak life. My faith speaks life to you, to your faith. The faith is on the inside of you. My faith says to you, you have to be able to hear the word of God. And God says no situation is hopeless. When Jesus is present in your life, every, everything is possible. There's nothing that's impossible. Absolutely nothing. You will be healed. You can be healed. You're thinking, I'm getting worse. Well, sometimes things happen like that, but you might get worse, but you'll get better. That's just a signal or a sign to say you're improving. So the old is passing away and the new is coming. And the new, the new faith is moving in. And the old problems, the old pain, the whole headaches, that stuff is moving out. Old stuff can't hang around when God puts new faith on the inside of you. The old body, the old stuff, the, the arthritis that came through the genes, God put a new DNA in faith to move those old genes out of the way. The DNA of faith will move those old genes. Those old genes that inherited, you know, I guess what we call the, the curse, because down to the first, second, and third generation, you know, you said, well, I got it because my granddaddy had it. Well, you know, we think we're supposed to have things because somebody in the family had it. But in the DNA of faith, in the blueprint, you know, faith says you don't have to have it. Faith says, I came to redeem you. I came to help you out. I came to show you a better way. And this way is the way that God designed for you to go. He designed for you to be bent over. There was a lady who was bent over for 18 long years. And Jesus said, look, he said, you are a daughter of Abraham. He reminded her of the covenant, which is an act of faith. And he straightened her right up. So listen. Faith, faith is on the inside of you, and nothing is hopeless. Nothing is without a remedy. There is a remedy for everything. And I know I've been speaking a lot about sickness, so you might be going through problems in your body this Mother's Day weekend. Some mothers might be at home wanting to get up and get out and go out to dinner, or being able to celebrate Mother's Day. You might be in some kind of pain, but look, don't allow that to hinder you. Come on now. Let's get with the word of faith and say that, look, it's possible for me to get up out of this place and I can't recover because I'm not going to let the pain dictate the old curse way. But now I'm coming to the new way of faith because I got the DNA on the inside of me. That seed is all I need. That measure is all I need. Jesus spoke about the mustard seed. You know, that mustard seed is the smallest seed in the garden. The smallest seed. But yet when it grows up, it comes up to be the largest plant in the garden. Isn't that amazing? Something so small, yet it can be so large. It grows up as a large tree. That's what the word says. That's right. God says that must have seen faith, yes, will grow up on the inside of you and it will produce the results that the Word of God has promised. Whatever you're going through, if it's financial, that's right, you put the Word of God and you put the seed of faith into all your problems. Everything that the enemy has tried to project against you, all the doubt, all the bills, all the headaches, all the nagging, all the frustration, all you have to do is put the word in the blueprint of faith right in the midst of that. And it doesn't take a whole lot. You just have to use what you've got. It's just the measure of faith that the blueprint would go in to the financial arena of your life. You don't have to be in this kind of situation that you're in. That's right. The enemy might have tried to bog you down with problems and bills and cares and, and thinking you that you can't get on, on along any better than this. But God's got a blueprint for you that can turn your life completely in a new direction. And this blueprint 
is designed to improve the quality of your life, the quality of your living. God wants you to understand, I have a better life for you. My faith will produce on the inside of you a quality life after the life of God. You don't have to be in poverty. You don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. You said, well, you don't, you're not here. You don't know what's going on. Well, the Word of God is there. God knows what's going on. And he said, never have I seen my righteous seed forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Well, God's Word is true. He can't lie because what He says is created when He says it. And this Word is so alive until when we read it, it's life coming off the pages of this book. So when we see God's Word, we see the life of His Word. His Word is boomerang in our hearts. So let's get a hold of the measure of faith and understand that God has put a blueprint on us. And you know, in that blueprint, there is the size. That's right. Size is in the blueprint. The size you want your house. Well, the size that God wants faith is in the blueprint. The color, the color you want your house. The color is in the blueprint. Yes, however large you want it to be, it's in the blueprint. Everything is made in the blueprint because it is in the design. That's where God designs our life, in his blueprint. So let's get to the blueprint of God's faith. He has faith for us. We are products of his faith. He gives, the Bible says, he gives unto us the measure. So he's given unto us. So stop saying, I don't have faith enough for that. That sounds good. Preacher, that sounds good. But I just want, look, it's in you. He put the kingdom and in the kingdom is the seed of faith, the measure of faith. He put it in you, so stop trying to say, I don't have, you do have it. You have it. You don't have to live beneath the privileges that God has given you. Don't let the devil beat the faith out of you with doubt and unbelief. Look, do not doubt this word. Look, God says my word will not change. He said, I will not alter my word. Whatever comes out of my mouth, I shall bring it to pass. Well, then let's, let's not doubt his word because when we doubt, we're putting seeds of doubt out. And sometimes all that doubt tries to, it tries to, I guess what you, what you can call negate faith. But you know, if you got more doubt, if you got, you know, if there's 10, there's 10 words and you got, you know, 10 words of doubt, and you're saying, well, where's the faith? The faith comes up like, oh my God, there's faith. Well, faith ought to be all ten, it should be, but if it's one, that one word of faith will get rid of the ten words of doubt. So don't allow your doubts to rule out your faith. The faith that's in you will rule out all doubt. Stop allowing doubt to have the dominion in your life. Jesus said, I put a kingdom on the inside of you. That's right. And that kingdom is filled with faith. It's not doubt. Why are you nursing doubt? Why are you nurturing doubt? Why are you giving birth to doubt when that's not in you? That's the enemy. You know, he tried to plant that kind of stuff. Jesus said when you were asleep, the enemy planted that stuff on the inside of you. Stop allowing the enemy to plant doubt in your mind. Don't allow him to scatter his seeds in your field. Your field should not be filled with the enemy's seed or his weeds. Don't get the enemy's weeds in your field because God wants to fill your field full of his goodness. If it's finances, his word tells us that we can have the very best. If it's need for provision of living, you can have the very best quality. Somebody, I know you're looking to move out of the area you're in. Well, God's got somewhere for you that's better than where you've been living. He's got a place for you that's got your name on it. Yes, you want to come up, well, God's ready to bring you up. Just take the measure of faith and begin to speak and say, yes, 
I, I, I see this situation, but God is changing the status of my life. And by faith, I'm going to be living in a mansion. And not when I get to heaven, but here on the earth realm. God can give you a mansion in faith. That's right. In faith, you can have the very best that God has for you. So I say to you, it is time that we understand God's plans for our lives. The blueprint, they are his plans for our life. The blueprint of faith. Get God's blueprint in your lives today because it is his way of assuring us of a good life. Are we tired of going through things again and again and again? Well, get the blueprint that God wants you to have. Or either or wake it up, or either bring it forward and erase all doubts because you have on the inside of your kingdom a kingdom that has faith built into it. The measure. Jesus taught, I reveal myself and my kingdom in small things. Yes, you're thinking, well, it looks like a little thing. It looks like it's, the big things kind of outweigh the little things. Well, don't worry about that. It's not the weight. Jesus said, lay aside every weight. You're worried about how much things weigh. God said, lay aside the weight of it and understand that it's not about weight, W-E-I-T-H-T. Not about measure. It's about faith. And it's about the kingdom that's inside of you. All things are possible. All things are possible. Everything is done by faith. When God looks at us, he looks to see the faith that's in us. And he looks to see that we're operating in that faith. We have to operate in the faith that he has given us. And if we're not operating in that faith, then we're not part of the covenant. We're not practicing his covenant. He can only move on the faith that he sees in our life. He sees the faith. When words of faith are spoken, God sees the faith. When we begin to say the word of faith, then God hears his word. That's what he's listening for. He's listening for his covenant. He wants us to be able to speak the covenant back to him because he wants to hear his word. He knows his word. He just wants to see that we also know his word. And when we speak his covenant back to him, that he will move on our behalf because we have that covenant on the inside of us. We've got to practice covenant principles. The principles of faith seem, they might seem small, but I guarantee you big things come in little packages. I've heard it said before. Maybe you've heard it said before also. There's some big things in little packages. Well, little things, now I'll tell you, get ready. Because little stuff is going to show up. Amen. God's going to show up in some little stuff in your lives. That's right. It's the little stuff that he's going to show up in. We're looking for, you know, you know, great big million dollars. But God said, look, if you can't watch over a penny, why should I give you a million dollars? You know? And my wife and always said, a penny is the mother of a dollar. And you're just letting pennies escape you and want God to give you a million dollars. It's the little things God look at. If you can't be faithful over a penny, why do you want God to give you a million dollars? Well, let's, you know, graduate. Maybe God will graduate us so we can come to the place of not trying to think God is too big and he's so big that he can't get into little things. Our minds are so religious until we're thinking religiously when we think God is too big to be a little flesh. Then we begin to measure God. But God is, can't be measured. Our minds couldn't even think if he was measured. We couldn't even imagine how big he is. But he said, I want you to think of me in the small things that you can see, such as the mustard seed. I want you to think of me in little things. If you look at a peanut, Judge Washington Carver, I'm telling you, he 
came to the understanding of Peter and he developed so many patterns for things. And those patterns are still alive today. What are you doing with the faith that you have? Are you still in a place where you just want to know, know what to do? Well, it's time now that you begin to graduate to the place that God has brought you to. This is the place of faith. Now I say to you, and to all of you that are out there today, that listen wherever you are, whether you're in this state or another state or another country, hear the word of faith. Let this be your gift of today. Let faith be your gift that's unwrapped. Don't ever say, I didn't get anything from Mother's Day. You got the gift of faith. God has given you for the gift of faith. And if you don't have the gift of faith, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you haven't received the kingdom, then let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask you to translate those out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them to the kingdom of light of your dear son, Jesus Christ, so that they will inherit the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the devil will no longer rule them in darkness, but your kingdom will rule and reign in their lives. By the name of Jesus, thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, I say this to you. You know, Adam might have lost, but I tell you what, Jesus regained it. So let's come back to the place that Jesus had put us in to regain the kingdom. It's been a pleasure speaking to you on this Mother's Day weekend. I love you. We love you here, friends of God. And we hope and pray that you have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. From friends of God, we send you greetings, love, and the presence of Jesus Christ in your, in your life.